Welcome to my shed. This is the first of our year 12 lockdown lessons. And what I want to do today is to start our study of igneous rocks by looking at uh, an idea in geology called the geotherm. For this lesson, you're going to need uh, the handout that's entitled the geothermal gradient uh, and you'll need a calculator. Okay, let's start. We know that the interior of the Earth is hot. A lot of our understanding of, uh, in particular, igneous processes is driven by the fact that the Earth has an internal heat energy engine. We see this heat expressed on the surface in a number of different ways. From the spectacular uh, geothermal hot springs like we can see here uh, this is a geyser um, in the Giza basin uh, in Iceland called Strokur uh, which erupts every few minutes uh, bo throwing boiling water uh, high into the air. There are places um, for example in New Zealand where we can see um, boiling mud uh, bubbling away at the earth's surface. Even, of course, to nature's big show, uh, the fact that we get molten rock erupted uh, at the Earth's surface tells us about the heat within. We can even see this closer to home with uh, hot, water, hot water springs in places like Taft's Well, for example. Now, this heat energy, as we said, drives geological process. It also tells us a lot about the Earth's interior. Let's have a look at some uh, data to do with this. This is a graph of the geotherm, or the geothermal gradient, if you prefer. It also shows us the temperature in which rock material melts. You'll see that varies with depth. Um, that's because of pressure changes. Now, there's a whole series of questions that are designed to help you to really understand what this graph is showing us. What I'd like you to do is have a go at each of these questions. See if we can work out what the, uh, the significance of uh, this graph is and the information we can, we can get from it. This is, these are the type of questions that could be asked, for example, within an exam. So what I'd like you to do now is press pause on the video and have a go at those questions. See what you can come up with. Okay, let's have a look at some of the answers to these and see if we can um, think about the significance of what these answers tell us. So, these are the questions we're looking at. The first question asks you to describe the change of heat within the Earth. We can clearly see that the temperature increases with depth, but that increase isn't steady. It's a non-linear increase in temperature. There are places where the Earth gets hottest, hotter very quickly, places where it happens much more slowly. If we look at the place where the Earth does get hotter most quickly, surprisingly, that's the crust. This is the place that has the steepest geothermal gradient. Now, we do need to be careful with geological graphs. In geology, we will change the uh, perhaps expected order of axes around in graphs, usually with you know, good reason. For example, here, it would seem odd to plot depth as anything other than increasing going down. But anyway, I then ask you to calculate the geothermal gradient for a few parts of this graph. Firstly, for the whole Earth. If the temperature in the core is 4,900 degrees centigrade, our radius is 6,370 or 6,400, we should get a... Um, 
geothermal gradient of about 0.77 degrees, 0.8 degrees or so, per kilometre. But we can see that that's not the same all the way through the Earth's depth. So, for example, between uh, 3,000 and 5,000 kilometres deep, there we see the temperature change um, from 3,700 to 4,800 degrees or so um, over that 2,000 kilometre depth. So that's a geothermal gradient of maybe only 0.55 degrees per kilometre. If we compare that with the top 200 kilometres of the Earth, where we've already seen that that's where the Earth's temperature increases most rapidly, By 200 kilometres down, the Earth's temperature is 2,000 degrees centigrade. If we do the sum there, we can see that the geothermal gradient there um, in that top 200 kilometres is 10 degrees centigrade per kilometre. Let's think about the significance of that. This is a place called the Map Maponeng Gold Mine in South Africa. It's currently the deepest mine in the world. It's actually following a, a dipping bed, uh, a conglomerate that has uh, an ancient placer gold deposit uh, in it. It's called the Ventersdorp Contact Reef. Now, the mining of this, um, this gold started at the surface, but the more uh, this gets mined out, the deeper it goes. By 2012, that mine was 3.9 kilometres deep. One of the main limitations to mining uh, is, is depth. Uh, obviously pressure. We can see in this photograph the, uh, the jacks required to hold up the, uh, the roof of the mine. But also the temperature in which the miners have to work. Can you work out, using that geothermal gradient we've just worked out, can we calculate what temperature it would be at the bottom of that mine? Okay, it's actually quite a simple sum. If it's 10 degrees centigrade per kilometre, the temperature at the, bot the bottom of that mine is going to be a, a roasting 39 degrees centigrade. It's a very high temperature to be doing hard physical labour. Okay. We can see the significance of this geothermal gradient close to the surface, but there's another uh, wider significance if we look at depth. This geothermal gradient tells us a lot about the internal structure of the Earth. We can see there are a few key points within the Earth. Places where we see the two curves on this graph actually meeting. Remember that the solid line here is the temperature of the Earth. The dashed line is the temperature where melting occurs. You can see the two coming together. Um, in this case, about 200 kilometres down. This creates what we call the Mohorovicic discontinuity, more commonly abbreviated to the MOHO, the boundary between crust and mantle. We also see a change here, about 2,900 kilometres down, the Gutenberg discontinuity. Here the lines actually cross. And finally, nearly 5,300 kilometres below the surface, we see the Lehman Bullen discontinuity, where the lines cross back again. Now, there's a significance to this. If we have the uh, melting temperature to the right or at a higher temperature than. Uh, the geothermal gradient, inevitably, 
those materials must be solid. They melt at a higher temperature than they're at. If though we see the melting temperature to the left or to lower temperature than the temperature that the rocks actually are, then clearly they're going to melt. So we end up with a liquid. So we can see from this that the uh, deepest part of the Earth is actually solid. Above that we have a layer that must be liquid. Where the lines cross again we have a solid. And they stay that way right the way to the surface. These zones within the Earth then represent the different layers that we find. The inner core, the solid ball of iron and nickel, the outer core, made of the same materials, but in this case liquid, even though the temperature is lower, because the melting temperature has decreased because of the change in pressure, it's liquid. The mantle, which must be solid, as must the lithosphere, which is the, the crust and the uppermost part of the mantle. Add these labels to your diagram, to your graph. So, in conclusion, we can see that the geothermal gradient varies with depth. It is possible to calculate what that geothermal gradient is, and we can see the significance of it, both in terms of our ability to, to mine for resources that we need at depth, but also to tell us something more about the internal structure of the Earth. If you've got any questions, get in touch. I'll see you next time.